Welcome to Morning Manor with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, Strength in the Struggle. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into the land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Genesis 28, 13 through 50. Jacob was an anointed, commissioned man of God. In spite of his shortcomings and failures, God still had a purpose for his life. But the fact that Jacob was promised blessing and direction didn't automatically guarantee his success. He never laid hold on the promise of God until after he had endured a struggle that lasted all night long and left him broken. God gives us promises, but it's up to us to lay hold of them and claim them. And often the strength to possess the promise is found in struggle. The promise of the Holy Ghost was given and then immediately following up the promise was the command to tarry and to wait, to endure, to seek after, to take hold of that promise. Even though they were all given the same promise, many walked away and never possessed it because they never endured the struggle. The struggle is not to destroy you, but it is to help you gain strength to possess the promises God's already given. God has brought us to a place of divine anointing and divine change and divine empowerment. And in order for us to receive in our lives the fulfillment of the promise of God, we must first endure the struggle that lasts all night and leaves us sometimes broken, weary, and sore. But when we come out on the other side of the night, when the weeping of the night gives way to the joy of the morning, we'll find that we've been changed forevermore and that we have been endued with power from on high. But first, the struggle. Don't curse the struggle. There's strength in the struggle. Don't curse the persecution. There's power in the persecution. Jacob was a man born to a rich heritage, a grandson of a man who was called the friend of God. Through his own hands, Jacob amassed great material wealth. A man who may have felt um, rich and increased with goods. I don't need to lay hold on the promise of God. I'm doing pretty good on my own. Until the day Esau boxed him into a corner. And so God allows a situation to befall Jacob that drives him to his knees. And he begins to call unto God from the depths of his soul. Let me share the before and the after of Jacob. Before the struggle, Jacob relied on his own strength. He went into the struggle strong and complete within himself. But during the struggle, God smote his thigh. This is significant because God said his strength is made perfect in weakness. After the struggle, his strength was diminished, but God's strength was increased. Before the struggle, Jacob went into the encounter a deceiver, a supplanter. After the struggle, his name was changed to Israel. Strength is never born in comfort. Strength is born in struggle. Before the struggle, Jacob had no relationship with God. He prayed to the God of Isaac and Abraham. But after the struggle, we find in Genesis 33, it said, And he erected an altar, and he called it Elohek Israel, which literally means to the God of Israel. In the struggle, Jacob found his own God. I thank God for the struggle, for it is the struggle that brings my strength. Thought of the day. The struggle is not to destroy you, but it is to help you gain strength to possess the promises God's already given. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated.